like things that happen to you when you're young, you never forget and you carry with forever. So I guess I'm just trying to go with it and be visible for younger kids that are that were Roxanne. Mm. No, you know, the girls that are tomboys and society forgets them or don't make them feel beautiful. That's why I do it. That That's what gives me the um, power, should I say, to go and get, go and do these shoots and turn up. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official .com. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Well, music and street culture. Killer Cowboy Podcast. It, my ribcage was shaking and the needle was bouncing out. You know, like when you put... Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was horrible. We're getting to this as well. That's what... Here you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you have to be. Listen, if you can stay at home, do it. Um, podcast, all the way through it. Um, big shout out graffitikings.co.uk hold tight to the regulars um, television app in effect free download Android iPhone for your sins street culture sports isn't it um, switching on now uh, inside the house as you can see my right your left no one does it best MC stylistic um, Midlands East Midlands no Birmingham, Birmingham. West yeah. Midlands West Black, country? Black Country no 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 not it's Birmingham centre city centre five ways I grew up in Roxanne inside the place, Grime MC Virtuoso. How are you going? Well, well, I'm good. I love that. I wish I could come up with something like that. It was quick. For the best with the rest and no stress. I love that. No, that's not it, but it's the way you just rolled. I loved it. Hold on. <laughs> this is this is MC. You know what I mean? I'm just aiming to please you. The, the, the MC is telling me, yo, you got bars. No, you got bars. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. We were just saying before we jumping on. Um, We'll get into the more finer details of, of uh, Roxana character in a bit, but you've just had tattoos done, haven't you? Yes. Yesterday, I've had my um, my leg done. Mm. So my shin, or the front of my leg, and then I've had my two rib ca cages. So I can't really move too much. But no pain, no gain, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is a tradition that's been longer than time and just getting yeah. involved. There's a scene for it and there's trends in tattoos, isn't it? yeah. They say that, do you know what, for me is, for me, tattoos give me confidence. Yeah. So I know it sounds silly. I never used to wear T-shirts until I had tattoos on my arms. I wasn't comfortable to wear vests until I had tattoos on my chest. Mm. I, I always used to feel a bit weird on holiday, so I tatted my bum so I could wear a bikini. I don't know what it is, but for me, for some psychological reason or whatever, I feel like people are looking at my tattoos, not looking at me, which makes no sense, but it makes me feel better. No, it makes logical sense. You know what? Did you ever go to university or college? Or no, right. I went college, yeah. Okay, so you never went to university. No, no, You know what? Some people have a metamorphosis. Okay. Like, oh, yeah, metamorphosis. Where they go to university, all of a sudden they find a new them. They find like new Ooh, things. Oh, I like that. Do you know what I mean? But I, I moved to London. So I came to London and found a new me. So then you immediately, the tattoos became a thing. Yeah. Right, see, it's a metamorphosis. Oh, I've never thing. thought of it like that. Yeah, 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 literally. I never went to uni, so it's a similar sort of vibe. Yeah. I don't think uni's for creatives. We don't like to be bogged down and I think we don't want to follow structure for that long. No. You know, uni's very, you know. Yeah. I like life lessons, which is exactly what tattoos are about, isn't it? Ditto, yeah. Exactly the same. I'm on the same page. Yeah, yeah, on it. Uh, and also, in a very similar kind of um, subject, it feels like, see, we're just getting to know you. Yeah. But um, here's the thing. <laughs> You've probably got like 8 to 10 to 12 to how many years? And only yeah. now I, I could quite happily say this is a new out artist because in my mind it's new, but the new it's yeah. been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know what's crazy? I feel brand new. Yeah. You know, when people say that, and I think, especially in music, you know, like you said, I came from Grime. Um, no, I didn't actually, Birmingham. I came from hip hop. We grew up listening to like the old Graveyard Shift crew and, you know, all the old MCs. You be 40, I grew up on you are from Birmingham. That's yeah, how old come on. I know. And then I kind of, Grime came to Birmingham late at 18, but yeah, even today, I feel brand new. I feel like I've just come into myself. Mm. You it's know? exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm ready for the world now, I feel like. Yeah, because you get people like me, they're coming along saying, oh my God, you're so new. <laughs> no, like, but I like this that. This is fucking sick. 
I like that. You know, like as as a creative, I don't know if you feel this too, is mm. we're constantly craving experience. Yeah. So new is good. Mm. Anything new is good because it's an experience. Mm. Like a lot of people say you should never be with artists or anyone creative because they cheat a lot and blah, blah, blah. It's not that. We just need new experiences. We're coming back. We just crave new experiences, whether it be love, light, music, you name it. Yeah. Anything new, even, you know what I mean? New and clothes, everything. New fashion. shit. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Get you. I get you. That's true. Insecurity though plays big part in those kind oh, of those maneuvers those 100%. maneuvers those unfaithful yeah. maneuvers that comes with a lot of i mean that's the young that's the young me talking you understand kills <laughs> but I, I i'm not that experience then feeds your creativity whether it be good or bad mm, you know it's for real that's what i mean so it's it's really hard the pain yes yeah do you know what i mean no okay. one wants to be playing yeah 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 exactly they want to be boring the, the colours of a uh, of of, a, of an artist is it, 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 the the burden that they bear and shit yeah. like that Adele you know Ian and all those kind of country Unless, folky songs that yeah, she killed she killed I love that random question what colour would you if you was any colour mm. what colour would you see yourself as <laughs> Ooh, I think I'm, I think I'm a turquoise or blue oh I love that Ooh. why uh, just because it's I don't know it's 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 a real um, uh, Islandy, beachy kind of colour. Oh, I like that. It's tropical. Tropical, yeah. You like that, yeah. What about you? I'd say yellow. Oh, yeah. I know, because it's. The, I love colour. So yeah. it's the brightest colour. Yeah. Colour of the sun. Yeah. And it's supposed to represent happiness. Yeah. You're very brand conscious, aren't you, as, a, as an artist? I, I've noticed that colours and um, visual aesthetic is, yeah. a, is a really important factor. Yeah, for me... I don't know if I would say it as an artist, but for me as a person, um, mm. I'm dyslexic my whole life. And in, when I was in school, they weren't sure how to teach me. So they made me feel, not on purpose, but I felt dumb a lot in school. I mm. felt like I couldn't get it. So I was drawn to, um, the teachers would ask me to do things like, oh, can you help um, design? Uh, oh, no, can you help with, you know, when they're doing um, theatre? Can you mm. help design some of the clothes? Or I used to play sport a lot. So that's where I used to get my creativity. Mm. I was captain of all the teams, you know, that was where they threw me in. So when I think, yeah, colour is so important to me. And just owning who you are, I think, you know? Colour is a is a reference point to a lot of... Th if you're dyslexic especially, you your, your other... Your other um, senses come alive with yes. mental senses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and as, I, as I got older, what I learned was, again, I've got colour sheets. So when I'm at home and I read books, I put the colour sheets over and it helps. If I read white paper, the words jump around. Where if I've, I've got a red sheet and an orange sheet and it just helps me stay focused and go from line to line. Hold on. So what, you mean you've got like, is it like a... Um... You just buy them from Amazon. It's actually a thing for dyslexic and people. And you put them over the... So it's literally just a see-through colour... Yeah. And a see-through colour piece of paper. So you or get plastic. lights and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly that. Pull it over the, the white paper and everything becomes clear. So it's, I react to colour. It's like my eyes are light. That's bonkersly good. That's Isn't it? But cool. why didn't they, why don't they, anyone that's dyslexic out there, if you find it hard to read or write or anything, get yourself some coloured paper. And it's helped you. Oh my God, so much. I've read, I read like, well, I'm not going to pretend a book a month, but I try to read. But you know, she reads novels in this piece, you know. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah, I'm this trying. Truth. This is the truth. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the idea of um, nowadays, especially with dyslexia and the way it's treated, back in the day, however, it was very much, oh, you're in the bottom of the class, the next thing you're relegated to yeah. a bunch of other people that, that A, may not want to work, B, are troublesome, you know, yes. juvenile. And the teachers are giving you the answers and telling you to... Uh, memorizing yeah. they're not breaking it down so you'll be able to work out what's actually happening when you're not with them you know because yeah. totally. they just want you to pass so it looks good for the school yeah but i get it again the school is a business it's you know business. hand your books over at the end of the year and then you get there's that kind of that, yeah 100 percent. i felt like ever so pressured to find a job when i was told to leave after school weren't you yeah no <laughs> my mom's irish so i started work from work experience yeah. my mom on the last day, came down and said, so are you giving my daughter a job? I was working since 14 at a hairdresser's. Every Saturday, I used to get £25 a day. Where was this, in Birmingham? In Birmingham, yeah. And £25 when you're in school at 14 is loads of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you know, like, you're going that's to school balling. <laughs> yeah. Fanta fruit twist, <laughs> yeah, yeah. chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Might go down a record shop, buy the whole rack. Yeah, yeah. literally. Remember when you used to buy singles? <laughs> yeah. Totally. What was the first single you ever brought? I can like I'm 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 calm when I say um, Guns N' Roses Night Train. Oh, that is really cool. I can do it. 
I love that. My second one was due to Bartman, however, so hold tight on that one. <laughs> mine was a tape. Was yours a tape? Did you ever um, wear a tape? Mine was a... No, mum, I asked for a record. I wanted it exactly oh like my, my dad. Oh, my God, did. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I well, what was tape. yours? Uh, mine was Gabrielle and E17. The oh. very first time. Yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah that yeah. was mine. <sighs> and then Craig David, can you fill me in? <laughs> Don't ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, no, but these are still reputable. Are I'm not going to yeah. lie. Are they? Okay, cool. I mean, I, you know, big up Brian Harvey all day, you know what I mean? Yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I listen when people need help. You know what I mean? Yeah, go, go I'm reach with out. you. Give him the flowers, man. Come on. He, you know, he's done yeah, his thing. He I'm with that. I agree. 100%. What's Birmingham like growing up? Do you know what? Birmingham was amazing growing up. I know you get, it gets a lot of stigma for being rough and mm. everything, but I don't know. I loved it. You know what I haven't been able to find? I've been in, I've been in London 11 years now mm. is the loyalty you get in Birmingham. Like your friends are your friends forever. Mm. You know, mm. I can't explain that. Since I've been in London, it's like every six months I'm meeting new people or I'm transitioning or someone got upset over this or someone got upset. I don't know. It's just I'm finding it really hard to find my people here. Mm. You know? It's big, isn't it? Yeah, it's really big. Birmingham's got a great scene. In fact, you know what? Let me just jump it back into this. So f- mm. for those of you who don't know Roxanne, um, we must we must add value to the to, to, to precedence. The reason why you're here and the skill yeah, sets and thank you. MC versatile, you know, we say grind, but it is, it's, it, there's a real, the, the patterns and the style and the way that you approach the rap, you can hear the in, in rhymes, you can hear the, the characteristics of a hip hop background. For yeah, because sure. that's kind of how I started. We yeah. used to listen to um, raps, Wu-Tang, mm, yeah, yeah. just try and write and rewrite, record over Wu-Tang. But, you're, but the beats you choose... They have, they have a heart back to a more esky boy. Oh my God, 100%. Dust yeah, 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 yeah. There's a real, and I don't mean none of the kind of throwback like you haven't done your research on production kind of throwback. I'm talking about 2021, when you go no, back to no, those of things. Course. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. It feels fitting. It yeah. feels for you. It, it yeah, that's where I was at the time. It feels relevant, yeah. Yeah. I think I was really just, um, when you go back there a couple of years, haven't released anything in a long time. It was me um, for a long time being in London, just trying to prove that I'm good enough mm. to, to be here kind of mm. thing. When I first came to London, um, the SBTV was doing the F64. Mm. And I remember begging him for one and he kept saying, no, no, like you haven't done enough, no. And, and then it was hard and then everyone was like, don't be gay, don't be openly gay. Mm. And I've always been openly gay. So... I think for the um, a long time I was too busy proving that I'm good enough. Where now, I just want to make music. Mm. I, I've got nothing to prove anymore. Mm. I'm I'm okay with me. I'm here. Mm. I'm queer, and I'm taking over the year. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm hey. just trying to be like him. Commercial there. <laughs> trying to be like Mike. <laughs> yeah. But you know what though? Um, there's a when you're when you're. Born in this headspace of like, yeah, well, what I am is what I am. That's always ever. You know, you you. It's not a, it's not a written brief mm. that you could suddenly have to adapt to. If you're so used to being that way and you're so done, yeah. what the fuck? Why have I got to do? You know what I mean? It's like yeah, this, is, this doesn't work like that. You're naturally. I agree. You know what I mean, it's fucking bonkers. Yeah, and it's like people always want you to pick a label or choose what community you fit into. When I'm still trying to figure out who I am myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? As you're transitioning and evolving. Um, I'm still working out who I am. Who I am today isn't going to be who I am next week, but I'm mm. cool with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get into um, back in the day then. So, Birmingham, you were uh, coming up through a hip hop background. Yeah, coming up through hip hop background. Um, and then we had Pato Banton. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, for reason, he opened yeah. a, like a little studio where we could pay a pound. It was people from my estate, a pound to go and record a little um, mixtape. And me and the boys used to do it. And then I remember, no, I used to go with the boys. And then one day I wrote some and I remember recording and everyone was like, who's that? And it was me. And then all the boys, yo, you're sick, you're sick. So then I just took it serious. And then Miss Dynamite came out. And then I was like, oh my God, there's girls doing music. Oh, so now I'm going back to that era. That's where, that's kind of when I got serious about music. People sleep on so many, like the Craig, we talked about Craig David, but, you know, in fairness, without, you know, without him, minus the ribbing, there was a lot of opening doors. Oh my God, we needed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same with Miss Dynamite, without question. Miss Dynamite was everything. I don't think that there's a rapper from the UK that hasn't got a major respect for Miss Dynamite. Sure. Um, I, can I just add at this point, Jamelia? What do you mean? She was from Birmingham That's as well. That's what I'm saying. Yes. That's I know Jamelia. I know her like, brothers. People don't sleep. People, and she was so hot back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And she had, her first track was with Beanie Man. Yeah. Mate, her first singles were 
wasn't Banging. it? It was bad. And then um, a superstar is still today yeah. one of my favourite songs. It came at the right time. Didn't it? Yeah. And yeah. I think she needed it. But then again, cancel culture. I'm not mm. sure what happened because I don't watch Loose Women. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. a lot have happened with her and she's just... Yeah, I know. I yeah. feel you. I mean, that's a, that's a... I mean, I don't watch Loose Women. You know, Same. But... A lot of people are sensitive to people having opinions, I think. Yeah, that is... And uh... she spoke out and she got backlash. Yeah, um, so. there's still a lot to learn, particularly in the British uh, British society. There's still a lot of fucking I agree. ground to be developed. But at its time uh, in, in Birmingham, I'm a big Birmingham fan, by the way. Hold tight tempo, hold tight, Zuki. Oh, my God, you know everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. Peoples. They're my people. Oh, wow. Tempo 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah tempo is proper. Yeah, yeah, these guys. That's are crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you into drum and bass? Because then there was a big drum and bass course, scene as doc, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Doc's got, um, man. Yeah, my godfather was bass man. No, what? So he used to teach me. He yeah. used to sit around the table, call me squarehead and like clash me as we were eating on a Sunday Bass man didn't play. Yeah, he was a G. Well, he still is. He still he, he still is doing his thing, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And hold tight, obviously, Goldie from the, well, oh Wolverhampton. My God. Nottingham, I think he was. No, yeah. he, he's Wolverhampton. Oh, is he Wolverhampton? Yeah. Doc's got the same uh, Wolverhampton ways. Yeah. yeah, these guys. Goldie's a G. And he just done Louis Vuitton campaign. Like, how yeah, amazing. Cool. Virgil called on him. Yeah, oh, that's cold. That's next level for the culture. Cold. Yeah. You know? That's right. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the ultimate street culture. Like, people sleep on Birmingham so hard, it does my head in. Yeah, but we've got Lady Leisha. Big up Lady yeah. Leisha at the moment. Day. Who's JK flying. as well. Oh, my God, JK. Georgia Smith. Yeah. Like, we've got some greats. We yeah, just sleep right. on them a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But it's cool. We're all right. We're used to being the underdogs, the second, you know? Yeah. I think now's the time that it's almost like that humbleness is disappearing because the weight in which you guys are coming through at the moment. Yes, is crazy. but do you know what? Social media has helped. It, mm. it, I was having this conversation yesterday. Instagram, mm. it's a good and a bad thing. We can connect to the world. Your phone is now your record label. You know, mm. Twitter, your PR, your this, your that. You can put your music out straight. You don't need. Mm. Do you know? Mm. So look, because of that, Birmingham and not even Birmingham. There's Manchester as well. They're doing their thing. Just doing their You've thing. You've got H and all these li little rappers coming through. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see yeah. Bugsy. Bugsy, yeah. Yeah, there's loads. Children of Zeus. Yeah. Oh, my God, don't. They are my favourite. I love Children of Zeus. They are so good. And you know what I love about Children of Zeus is they're a little bit older. For some reason in hip-hop culture, I don't know if you agree, but it's like you can't get old. Mm. When you're past 30, you're doomed. Mm. Where uh, rock and roll culture, the older you get, you're an idol. You're mm. iconic. You're someone who people look up to, but with um, people like Children of Zeus, um, they're showing the older music. Yeah. Does that make sense? And yeah, the youngers sure. are respecting them and appreciating it. So I feel yeah. like the culture's evolving nicely. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean about rap culture and how it... There's a point there where it doesn't age well, but I think what will counteract that is the fact that... Like, I like mumble rap, I like all that stuff, you know what I mean? Do you? Um... I'm hit and miss. Shall I tell you what I like? I mean, I, I listen to Napalm Death, you know what I mean? Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So yeah, you can't understand that neither. But but when you're in it, you're in it. There's a time yeah. and a place. You know? Yes, and I agree with that. Yeah. Um. But what happened, what I think, here's my theory. Yeah. Is I think mumble rap will take the heat away from what hip hop used to be. Hip hop used to be a disposable sound. Yeah. Until mumble rap came. Yeah. And in the very same way that heavy metal back in the day, the punk came along and kind of, Everybody was out of touch with metal. They didn't like it. But then as soon as punk left, it gave metal a new way. Oh, and I never a new thought approach. of it like that. Yeah. And I think hip hop coming back after the, the mumble rap. I can't thing, wait for it to come back. Yeah, I think it will age Because over well. here, it's like grime has now become drill. Mm. And for me personally, the vibration's too low. Mm. It's not the fact what they're saying. No, no. It's not the music. It's what they're saying. I'm mm. just not... Mm. You know, we're yeah, it, doesn't, too, it doesn't connect for you. It doesn't connect. We're mm. too violent. We're too gangy. And actually, people are actually being violent. So the arts the young kids. They're imitate, imitating the art rather than the other way around. Yeah. I see what you're saying. You know? Because you, you're in Hackney now. You're, I'm Hackney. Yeah, I'm uh, East London. Yeah. So for, for those of you who are outside of the, the UK, I'll put a little map down there. So East London, <laughs> Hackney. So, and do you, do you feel like you're closer to that kind of action? Being? No, luckily, I'm like Shoreditch Hackney. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like cool, yeah, ha nice. cool kid Hackney. So yeah, it's all right. Nice. Everyone's got dogs, skateboards yeah. and goes flower market on a yeah, Sunday. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, you see their but, socks and shit. Yeah, you go, you go. Yeah, <laughs> Trousers are wrong. I've got that. Yeah, <laughs> ah. like, disclaimer, we are cool. But yeah, if you go two bus stops up the road, you're in Homerton. Mm. So yeah, I'm just, it's, I'm just sad with the kids, you know, all the stabbing mm. and the knives and all of this. It's, it's, just, no way it's happening live. from 14. It's so sad. Mm. 
Do you think it's, it's always been the case? Because like Birmingham's had its run. Do you think it's always been the case? It's just never been publicised or exposed. Maybe, so or again, so social media. Maybe it's just being more exposed. Mm. Yeah, but I feel like we need to. Things have got to change. Mm. You know, it's sad. I'm scared to have children. Mm. I don't want to raise them here. Oh, yeah, you're right. Children are. That's a whole other beast. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? No, I couldn't. Dealing Not today. No. Or your, your, your son or your daughter going to school with Instagram on their phone. Mm. Imagine being in school with Instagram. Oh, my God. We would be in the toilets taking photos with all the pet. No way. Yo. Like, you know what you like at school? No way. <laughs> for 20 minutes late for everything all the everything. time. Phone would be going off. You'd get your teacher on Snapchat. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Everything. Hell. And then they'll say, oh, you can't come in because one of your mates got COVID. Then you can all go home. It's like, yes, I'm out. Peace. See yeah. Ya. And then you're on your thing. We've got, we ain't got COVID. Yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. Do you reckon a generation's going to suffer for all of this? Yes. I think, I, think, so. I think they will. But I believe the generation below them are going to save the world. Yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah. They're, it's, it's kind of like their old souls are coming back in the kids, mm. if that makes sense. So I was speaking to my little cousin. She's 12 and... She got really upset. She's obviously I'm mixed race, so I, my my white and my black family. It's just easier to say mm. Irish and Jamaican. And mm. she got really upset for Black Lives Matter. And she was schooling me about how hard it is to be black. And I just loved it. And not that she's going to change the world, but the fact she's so aware. How old? How old and she how wants, younger is she? She's eleven. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's amazing. Or she might be twelve. But the fact she's so aware, and you know, she goes to school. Some of her friends are fluid, mm. like some are transgender, and that's amazing. I, I didn't find myself and my sexuality until I was 21. Mm. But had it had been around and exposed and people be open to it, maybe mm. I could have come out at 12. Mm. How amazing would it be to know who you are by the time you leave school or be closer to who you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you think there's some things, and this is not one reference to what you just said there because I believe mm. the same thing. I think yeah. it, 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 a utopian world of like a lot more kind of everyone being at peace with everyone yes. is, is a really I good think idea. Learned behavior <laughs> is is yeah, yeah, you know like negative learned yeah. behavior. But do you think like as you get older there are, and by the way you can choose your lane whenever you, you can flit however you want, yeah. you know what I mean? But do, but as you get older there definitely is a thing of like oh actually you know what uh, that was maybe a thing I was going through there. I'm 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 42 now and I'm like no. yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah 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 of course. It, it Sorry things. I thought you said you was 42 and say no you're not I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Thank you. Come you look on. Amazing. I'm I just turned 32, so... Come what, on, girl. We're out of the 20s. That's right. Yeah. And, and you must say to yourself, hey, you know what? I'm really pleased I'm in the place I'm in now. Oh, my God. I'm so pleased I'm in the place I'm in now. It feels good to know. I'm so glad to get out of my 20s. Mm. You know, and they're like, they're best years of your life. No, they're not. <laughs> no. No, they're not. It's a lie. <laughs> you, you get heartbroken. You learn all the lessons. You think you, you know everything. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you don't. <laughs> You have the, the best nights out, the worst nights out. By the out. way, because there's some young, it isn't for real. You know, big up yourselves, you know, keep doing your thing in your 20s for real. But um, <laughs> but let me, to be to be, to be serious. Disclaimer. Yeah. Disclaimer, yeah, disclaimers all day, but you know it is. You know no, what it is. No, but you know what? You've got more to look forward to. Mm. That's all it is. Don't be scared to turn 30. Mm. Applaud it. Appreciate it. It's going to be amazing. Some people didn't survive it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't. And enjoy your 20s. You know, the, the thing about, in, in, in this Mm. career path that we have is we we take for granted the um the the lessons that you have in our 20s and how important the freedom is to be creative in those oh my years. god i know you want to rush so quickly to get so to an age, quickly but isn't yo, it crazy yeah and then as you get older you've got bills you've got mm. this to pay you've got that mm. you've got to show up for like your parents your mum, mm. your friends yeah, yeah. Shit, so you have yeah. to like literally at the moment i have a schedule for creative time mm. or i just go on walks how do you get creative I don't know. I just it just comes in like a mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's like a bit of an on switch, I suppose. I mean, everything is hit and miss. Of course. You, but on that subject, if if you've got a schedule for it, um, curiously, what what is your time frame turnaround to go switch to switch on and say, right, I'm creative now? What do you reckon the turnaround of creative headspace is for I, you? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. When I say schedule, I mean like I'll say to myself, okay, next week, rocks, you've got to finish these two songs. Or you've got to write two freestyles. And then throughout the week, sometimes I'll get up and feel super creative. Mm. I won't even wash. I'll just go straight and put music on and be in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And then you finish it. Or sometimes I'll be... I write a lot on the bus or on the train when I'm travelling. I'm just looking. I'm not thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't have, like... Yeah, yeah that's I don't such know. a good idea to write on the bus. Honestly, it's the best because I can't explain it. I've, I've been on the 55 where the guys literally come up and said, Love... 
are you going somewhere? Are you homeless? I was oh, like, no, you, no, yeah, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, just, just like, being creative. Yeah, I went all the way around twice. And he was like, love, why are you still on this bus? Kind of thing. But I loved it. 55, you get out. It starts in... It starts West... at Oxford Street. No, it goes further than that. Yeah, Marble Arch, right. wasn't it? Marble Arch. And then it goes all the way to um, Walthamstow, Leighton. That's Walthamstow right. Walthamstow back round, yeah. Oui. Yo, you get a dynamic of people when oh, you Oh, my God. It. I love it. Honestly, it's try it or sitting in the oh, park. Oh, yeah, I did it. I mean, you know, you hit Stoke Newington, it's like, oh, hello. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's <laughs> like, where am I? I've yeah. walked into Amish. Yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah, all the yeah. Jews are out. Yeah. yeah. Bonkers. Yeah, I bet that's a real good creative exercise. It is. But then again, it's getting up and getting out to do it. You know, mm. it's like we all want to go to the gym, mm. but how many times do we get up and go? Super important that you wake up and do it. I agree. Not the gym, but I mean, yes. But, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, both. But, but, but right, but create. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you like working with producers? I love working with producers. Who's your favourite producer? Oh, of all time or just like... Who you work with and of all time? Um, who I work with... Do you know, I love a bedroom producer or a producer that's not found yet. A guy called Machino from Birmingham who I've been working with for my new project and he is just... There's nothing he can't do. Mm -hmm. You know, he just mm -hmm. sits there. He's like a little geek. He just sits there, smokes and that's it. He's in his zone. What do you want? This... That, he can do it all. Oh, I love that but shit. But of all time, Pharrell Williams. Because mm. he can just do it all. Yeah. You know, from the NERD to him, <laughs> to all the hip-hop stuff. Yeah, it's, um, he's, a, he's a force. To Despicable Me, now he's doing um, kids' films and stuff. I just love it. He's, yeah. he's, his range. And his model-esque approach, his, his asexual... But I just love him. Yeah, he'd, yeah. yeah like, you, your music... And your sensibility, mm -hmm. your 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 brand, your overall look. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's some model esque kind of um, things. Yeah, yeah, of course. You've done a lot of campaigns and things. Recently, I've been mm. so blessed. Yes, yeah. which I'm really grateful for. I can see the comparable with the Pharrell thing. No, literally, the... Pharrell slash ASAP Rocky with a little bit of Wiz Khalifa. Mm. I, they're the people that I would emulate. Oh, and a dash of Jaden Smith. I just love the eclecticness of them. Mm. I love that they're not scared to be them. Mm. You know, like they're men, they paint their nails, they wear yeah. whatever they want. They will wear a skirt if they want. Yeah. You know, my idols are Grace Jones, Ooh. my biggest idol to date. Oh, she said the G word. Whoa, Grace Jones. Grace Jones. Hell yeah. Yeah, do you know? She's like my biggest idol, definitely. And, and, and unsung as well. Yes, yeah. Do you know? I will fuck with her. Same, even though she wouldn't... Yeah, even though she probably won't F with us, but no, I, yeah, 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 I would love to. She's on a level. She she just broke down so many, so many barriers, and she was told no so many times, mm. you know. And I just love the fact that she's actually a straight woman. Mm. You know, you look, you see her, you'd expect her to be gay, but I love that she's not. Yeah, you know, she's yeah. just her version of a woman, and that's what I think my message is. This is my version of the woman I am. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. do you do you on measure? Do you take the creative value? to the same as you would musically as you would in a like a fashion campaign or? oh my god a hundred percent yeah no but i'm a i can't lie i'm a bit of a pussy on campaigns i'm so scared i'm still it's still new to me i'm still so overwhelmed what what what, what bit what what what's the overwhelming part the overwhelming part of every of having to deliver by just being yourself you know, you get put... So, so I, when I worked with Rankin in Dubai, and Rankin is, like, one of the biggest God. photographers in the yeah. world. Yeah, he's been you know that famous picture of Kate Moss where she's turning around doing that? That's him. Mm. So, th anyway, when I was with him, Strong. and they're like, okay, make up. All right, Rocks, you're on. Okay, we've got 15 minutes because we need to get the sun set. You know, the sun was setting in the desert. And he's like, all right, cool, just go and be you. And you're like, okay, um... Shit. Go and be me. I don't know how to be me. Mm. You know when you're actually thinking of how to be yourself, it's so daunting. Someone passed my bio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I've got no poses. What should I do? Mm. Don't pose. Okay. No, no, no. Look at me. Mm. Yeah, that's the bit that's daunting. I feel like I'm blagging it, but I'm very grateful because I still see the ugly Roxanne that nobody wanted to play with or no boys fancied when I was little. I don't know. Again, this is the, it's my own insecurities and learnt behaviour, but I'm so grateful for it. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That imposter syndrome is very real. Yes, 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 yes. And things that happen to you when you're young, you never forget and you mm. carry with forever. So I guess I'm just trying to go with it and be visible for younger kids that are that were Roxanne. Mm. No. You know, the girls that are tomboys and society forgets them or don't make them feel beautiful. That's why I do it. That that's what gives me the um power, should I say, to go and get go and do these shoots and turn up. 
gives you a level of humanity as well when you actually yes. speak on those levels of, actually, I don't know what I'm doing. Because a lot of people, when they're in front of a camera, particularly on Instagram and things like that, there's a people only ever post the great stuff. Yeah. And there's a greatness to ranking. There's a greatness yeah. to these people. Yeah. That you have to kind of like... Yeah, or you want to emulate and be better, <laughs> you know? And I don't have a pose. You know, you would like you say about these girls on Instagram, if you look down their, um, their feed... They've got a pose mm. and they do it. Whenever they feel good, that's the pose. Yeah, I don't have a pose yet. So you know, My latest thing um, where that's concerned, because, you know, with these, there's a big edit to it. And particularly mm. with the graph ones, when I do graph podcasts, it's like, well, I want to get the... I want to get what's on the street now. So I go over to the tagged section. Yeah. You know, the, the tagged photos are the real photos. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hit the tags. Hit and the you're tags. Like, you see that you all those posy pictures suddenly disappear. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so true. Yeah. That is so true. Tags and, you know, I've started to hit on um, recently hashtags. Mm. I didn't realise how important hashtags were. Mm, mm. Don't tell Laura, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to be like Instagram. Oh, tight Laura. Shout you out see, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. It's, um, there's tricks to trade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like, um, do you feel like the mission brief, because the, 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 the feeling I get is there is a lifestyle that you... You want to encourage the tomboy effect, the fit, the... hundred percent. That's your thing, right? Yeah, that's my thing. My thing is being your own version, being able to be your own version of whatever you want. Like, I'm a woman, I identify as she, her. You know, a lot of people that look like me or are quite masculine identify as they and them because... Mm. But I don't. I am I love being a woman so much. I'm just this version of a woman. That's all. And I think that's my biggest message. You don't... I respect all... Um, you know, transgender, I respect everything that everyone feels, but you can just be you mm. as well. It's fine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? This yeah, is yeah. my version of them. You don't have to wear dresses and things that a lot of people feel like you have to do as a woman. Yeah. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No, only child. At the growing up, that is. You yeah. Were yeah, okay. Do you know what's crazy? I was talking about this yesterday. My friend, um, no, not yesterday, a couple of days ago, my friend got a newborn and she was like, yeah, I got told that. And I was like, no. I haven't had a baby in my whole life since I was one. Because I had no brothers or sisters, mm. I don't know how to be around kids. It was always just me and mum. Wow. I know. How crazy is that? I've never lived with kids. I've never... Uh, yeah, I'm really quite... I know. Yeah, I'm the same, man. I can't even... I'm like, yeah. Are you an only child? No, I no. just don't really do kids that well. And I'm not particularly... <laughs> You're just mean. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm a constant mean mug. I'm like, no, nah, I don't really do it. You know, me I'm, and responsibilities. I just kind of moved them over there. I mean, yeah. I was thinking this, but I want to be one of them, you know, them 40 year old moms. I'm learning how to DJ that has their kid sling, slung on their back and DJing at IB for at 40 mm. in my shades, mm. taking my kids all around the world. The Bali crew, that's what I think when I think Don't, of them. That's where I cut my hair off in Bali. Really? Yeah, the Bali, literally. I'm feeling for Bali at the moment. I feel like all the hipsters have gone have to Bali. Been? They're all just battering the shores. Have you been? Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. Isn't it amazing? It's all right. I, you know what? I, I, I'm not really like a holiday kind of guy and I'm not particularly, I'm not like heavily spiritualised, do you know what I mean? No, I get that, but you're not a holiday guy. <laughs> nah, man, I'm no, nah. See, I've always been a holiday girl and then Bali turned me into an explorer. Really? Yeah, it changed my life. It's a beautiful place. Isn't it? Yeah, I can fuck with it. It is nice. The gigs, the gigs are awesome. See, I went on my own though. I went on my own like just before I was 30, broke up with my ex, shaved all my hair off. I went there to kind of be reborn. So it was different for me. I haven't done that party. Mm. I've done Ubud, um, Changu, is that what it's called? And somewhere else, I can't remember, in the fields. Did you go to that skater place in no. Bali? No, What's no, no. I called? didn't even hear about it until I got back to England. I heard. I played So it. I've got to go back. Oh, she my God. Crazy. Are you serious? I think I've got a video of it somewhere. It's fucking cold. That place was sick because in the middle of the venue, there's a fucking half pipe. What? Yeah, in, in like, you know, the Dogtown Z Boy style yes, in yes, the ground. Yes. They had that. Oh my God. The whole crowd around there was looking like these are gods in the. In the of in course, the, I can imagine. The I can imagine. Going in. And there's skateboards everywhere. See, hey, I've got to go back. Yeah, you have to go back. I have to. That. I'm going to try and go for New Year, I think. New Year's oh, Eve. Damn, I forget the name of that. It's killing me. I'm going to Google it now you've said but it. Getting like, you're in, this is the tomboy kind of. You're into that stuff. Oh my God, I'm you're loving it. That. I've just started having skateboard lessons. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I skate everywhere anyway, um, in lines, rollerblades. Mm -hmm. Love rollerblading, ride my bike everywhere across London. Um, yeah, oh, I'm currently training for a fight, a boxing fight. I signed up for a boxing fight for charity. Oh, wow. I know. 
And I'm, I thought I had this until I found out the girl I'm fighting plays for Chelsea football team. So her cardio is already up there. What are you going to do, man? If that I'm going to have to knock her out. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got to train. What are you gonna do if like they knock your nose out? She won't. I'm. I'm not. I, I'm. In my head, I'm Brad Pitt in Snatch. He hit me once. I get up and go crazy. Ah. I'm yeah. Don't look at me like that. I know. I know. Model don't. Career, man. Don't. It's all right. I can take a punch. Really? I hope so. I, Yo. I'll go find out. <laughs> you don't learn today. I know. I've always been curious about people that that go that distance, like, and. Well, because that's a risk for your for somebody that's in the, the kind of modelling and, and you know mm. that industry, don't, doesn't that fear doesn't no that in? no. Do you know what? Hope is the only thing that beats fear. Bless my nan. She told me that when I was really young. So I'm always hopeful. Mm. Cause, do you know mm. there's only good that can actually come from it? It's for charity. Mm. So win or lose, I've done something amazing. What's the charity? Um, Pedro. I'm I'm fighting for Pedro Club. It's basically in Hackney where I live. It's the only. Um, community centre that's left mm. and the the, um, the council are trying to buy it off the guy that owns it to build flats and houses but it's the only place in the area where kids can go and he trains them it's actually a boxing gym he trains them for free okay. so it's like put the knives down and come and fight this it's is all fun. making sense now okay. yeah so it just makes sense yeah it does growing up my community centre saved me mm. going studio doing this doing that mm. you know yeah. so I feel like it's really important I feel like London isn't the easiest of places to live at best of times. I mean, you're very much like me. We kind of came into it rather than lived here. Yeah. I grew up outside of London. And Did you? Yeah. yeah. So I feel you. And I know you had hard times, you know, integrating and getting... Like, oh, my God, of course. I was, I've was. i been homeless. You know, I was homeless for six years. How was that? It was... It's crazy. You know, it's crazy to think I lived this life. And... Um, yeah, so I was homeless. I remember going to Hackney Council saying I'm homeless. I need somewhere. The woman said, no, you're not. So I remember getting my biggest jacket and literally sitting outside. She she left work at 6 p.m., came back in at 9.30 a.m. And, and saw me and she was like, okay, you are homeless. Let me help you. It was the worst, the coldest night of my life. Literally sitting there. scared. I'm so scared of rats. Every minute I thought oh, there was a rat. Yeah. It was awful. It was so scary. But again, it opened... I was in a really low place and I thought my life was over and I felt really sorry for myself. And then I remember um, going into St. Mungo's when I got a really good one and they had like an opening thing where every Monday you would have to check in. I remember going down to the first one and just not really wanting to talk to anyone, you know, sitting on my own. And, and they would say, how are you to all the other people? And um, one girl was like, yeah, I'm all right. And you know, when you start hearing other stories, this, this one girl, bless her, she got raped and then she had a baby and then the baby someone robbed a baby and it was just when you listen to some things that people have been through it really makes you check yourself like you're just here because you've got nowhere to stay right now you can't go home because you're gay is that really that bad mm -hmm. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. where this lady has started her whole life again i remember um that same morning talking to a guy kevin and i had an interview for ee at the time and me and him were talking and then i was like he was like i'm going to work i said me too we've walked out of um the hostel and he's just gone like that, sat on the floor, whipped out big issues, and that was his job. Whoa. And I'm jumping on the... I didn't know. And it just made me think. It really made me check myself. Like, stop mm. moaning. Mm. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Mm. You know, you're going to a job interview. This is his job. Not that there's anything wrong with selling the big issue, but being homeless opened my eyes, made me start feeling sorry for myself, and mm. made me a go-getter. Mm, really and easy, made me understand homeless. Because, again, I was quite ignorant to it. Oh, you choose to be outside. You choose to be a drug addict. No, they don't. Once you hear the stories and people's lives and what they've been through, mm. you really, I really have a lot of respect for everyone. Mm. So it helped me again. I guess it's, it's horses for courses. Everyone has their own stories and yeah. shit happens the way yeah. people have unfortunate circumstances. They just yeah. cannot be... Like, just be kind. I think yeah. that's what I try to live by. Be kind when no one's looking. Mm. Energy, you know? innit? Yeah. And I'm a big on energy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you are, mm -hmm. aren't you? It's totally. I listen to my intuition. I listen to the feelings that I get, you know? What's your intuition feeling right now in terms of... I said it to you when I first walked in, and I'm not just saying this because we're on camera, from you, I got so much love. I got <laughs> a really genuine soul. I got a feeling that you would do anything for the people you love, and I love that. Oh, I appreciate it. No, that. I mean it. And, and that's why I said it to you before we started mm -hmm. filming. Mm -hmm. You're really genuine. It's a thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. No, it's all right. Yeah, um, yeah. And in terms of... Because in terms of... This right here, like mm -hmm. we're, it feels like you're in a juncture in your your, your life and career. Hundred percent. And things are about to 
take a shift and to have you here is like I really appreciate it because you know we no thank you there's a lot like, of I topics appreciate here it too. You know? yeah 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 so now I'm just trying to figure out how to get this into music cool wow yeah without sounding like I'm preaching but still fun and there's nothing wrong with preaching mm. but it's just how to put this into an artist because I never want to be a facade or someone and then as soon as the cameras come off I'm someone else I always, one, I, I always want to be me and everything because then you won't you can't lose yourself mm. you know I think mm. some people get caught up in their mic their performance persona you know mm. yeah so I'm just trying to find where I sit where that I shit's fit catchy as well people yeah. do that you know yeah. But again, get your money. Have you ever done something for work that you didn't want to do? Mm. We've all had the shitty jobs, the night yeah. of fives, McDonald's, this and that for a paycheck. So I don't judge people when they make cheesy music. Mm. I get it. Mm. You know, get your money. But in a, in an age of um, of technology and um, music consumption, entertainment consumption, there's an audience for everyone in everything. Everyone, literally. If you can get 10 amazing supporters... And if, there's just 10 and feed all the things that you're trying to sell, move, support, anything, you'll be okay. And that's 10. It's true. You know, instead of trying to please 100 people that are never going to really care about what you're doing. It's funny because on a couple of the graffiti podcasts, I, I've, I've kind of said this before, so excuse me if I'm saying it again. But uh, Banksy, he'll have like mm. th- 13 million followers or whatever on his Instagram. But let's be honest, it, all he needs is five Russian billionaires. That's, and uh, that's all he needs. One. Dude. All he needs is one, yeah. The rest are all just like, whatever, man. That's just number, no, that's nothing. Literally. Didn't he sell something and then as soon as he brought it, he shredded. I yeah. just love him. Yeah. <laughs> I just love him. Yeah. Facts. And then he painted a, a vest for Stormzy. Stormzy. A you know? seminal moment in culture. Ah. Oh. Gives me goosebumps Same. thinking about it. Same, that's why I just did that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Wasn't it amazing? And then Stormzy called out Theresa May at the time, I remember. And Grenfell. I watched this old Glastonbury the other day. This must have been like 2018 or something. And there was Stormzy wearing the Grenfell top, still supporting it. I love it. it. Glastonbury is so important. Mm. When I think Glastonbury, do you know what I think? Um, When Oasis didn't want Jay-Z there. (laughs) Do you remember that? And he came out singing, Today (laughs) is going to be the day. Loved it. I felt like he was singing for... Because, you know, to be quite honest, when it comes to the Oasis thing... I mean, I can't rock and roll star, but I think... No, I love Oasis, but... Yeah, I can fuck with it. The only thing I will say about that... That era, especially, is like... Uh, for Jay-Z to go on and just do it, I think that was just... It spoke volumes to a... A working-class group of people... Mm-hmm. That weren't into Oasis. Yeah. And the other working class people just didn't like it. Yeah. And the rest of us were like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that's hip hop. Yeah, yeah. It's unapologetic. It's yeah. in your face. It's brash. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he was. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. No matter what. Yeah. That's the real rock and roll, actually. Isn't it? That's... And, and that's the thing. Yeah. When, when you open it all out, it's just rock and roll. Yeah. It's Literally. Energy. And Ener- again, energy. But we needed that to happen. Again, mm. we've evolved so much. Now, Stormzy's headlining Glastonbury yeah. as a grime yeah, artist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? and it's yeah, exactly. Jay Z broke the broke the mold. The mold, yeah. And we need more. We need to keep breaking it. Where do you see yourself in uh, in two years' time? I say two years because oh, wow. you know what I mean. Because you're no. in this process, you know. Yeah, do you know what? Being visible, being humble, and being approachable. I don't know where I'm gonna go. If you asked me a year ago, where would you be today? I would never think I'd be where I am. Mm. I don't know. I just I'm leaving it all up to the universe, but I'm just going where. I, I'm just going with what feels right, what feels good. Mm. Definitely in music. Hopefully still in modelling if I haven't put on any more COVID weight. Please don't put us on another lockdown, Boris. <laughs> My belly can't take hey, yo. it. Yeah. <laughs> yo, you know, that, that is true. That DJing. Is true. And I would love to hey, get Hey, listen, into, you don't give me none of that. Don't give TV. me none of that business. No, I mean, it. Uh, listen, I'll show you later. <laughs> and I, yeah, I would love to get into TV as well. I would love to be that visible, mm. you know? But yeah. again, I'm happy with just step by step. Yeah, I believe what's for you won't pass you, you know. And perhaps the honesty that you're looking for in your, uh, you, in people experiencing you as an artist, mm-hmm. sometimes you just got to be so super transparent. And actually, yeah, yeah, I'm on TV, and what uh, this is the real me. And yeah. your mess, that message is like a beacon for. Oh my god, I've always done that. Even yeah. when um, just before COVID, when I'd done a campaign, and I was still working in a bar. And someone came in to me, why are you still here? Because I still got bills to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be, you know what I mean? I'm, I've always been that person. Mm. 
I've always had jobs, always, never been shy, worked mm. in Night Town. Mm. And people would come in, oh, you're Roxanne, yeah, I am, what can I get you? Size mm. seven, one moment, and I'd be back. I, I never feel, I've never been ashamed of my situation. Mm. And I think that is a big thing and a mold that we need to break. Break. 100%. It's okay to struggle. Yeah. It's okay to do more things mm. than music, mm. you know? I salute anyone that can... Like, look at you, oh. DJing, podcasts, music, yeah, you yeah. know? Spray, graffiti, yeah. like... <laughs> On it? Yeah. Because people, you know what I mean? You don't want to be that. When, you're, when you've got an opportunity and it's a little mm -hmm. crack in the wall to go through, you just got to stretch out like that you wall. Do. You do, I don't really you? I feel like you do. And, and as I'm getting older, I've realised a lot of people are scared to do that. Where it's to me, it's always go through. Yeah. It's just a lot for people. Yeah. Because then they've got their parents behind them going, get a nine to five. You've got kids now. Yeah, you've got my a car. Like that. <laughs> But then again, that's them just projecting because they're scared yeah, because they're of fair. what they went through. They're that's fair. what I've realised. Don't you think as you're an adult, you realise your parents don't really have it all figured out either. They just don't want you to be mm. the mess that they think they were mm. when they've actually not, you know? Yeah, 100%. But the, mm. the DNA, the, 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 the model in which they set you, the parameters are, well, if you come from a good background, you know, good, yeah. wholesome background... What is wholesome? I don't fucking know. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Whatever it is, yeah. they teach you the right from wrong and they teach you to get a, get a job to sustain yourself. Then you're already in the yeah. game. That's yeah. What it is. I agree. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And common sense, which is really fucking hard for people to have. I didn't realise how hard it was. <laughs> and so much stupid people out here. Oh, everyone thinking logical. <laughs> yeah. Like, logical is not common sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I still often think to myself, yeah, I don't know whether the internet is just like breeding these sorts of people or it's just bringing people to light all those other I think it's yeah. let's not no offense Matt Hancock <laughs> yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, let's just talk about the one yeah. that happened there. Yeah, anyway yeah. facts yeah. facts Boris Johnson holding people to they were all having them. affairs in Covid yeah 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 <laughs> I know mm. won't say anymore but facts it mm -hmm. um, raises the Brings a spotlight into things, doesn't yeah. it? It's, uh, and awareness, yeah. and it lets us know that our government are oh, full of shit. But yeah. we move. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you can choose your friends, you can choose your environments, you can, you know, get the blocking or yeah. Susan or whatever. Yeah, you can choose everything. Yeah, exactly. everything is temporary and replaceable, except time. Yeah, exact. Time is the currency. Yeah, oh. I love that. Time is the currency. That's my next caption. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check out my story. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. I love that. Thank you. You too. It's been good. Like, we've talked about a lot. Yeah, yeah. We cover bases around here. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, thank um, you. Anyone you want to shout out? Shout out Laura. Shout out all the women worldwide. Shout out my mum. Mm -hmm. Shout out the gays. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> shout out the rainbow. Well, shout out don't. my cat. Yeah. yeah, my cat's my best friend. Uh, Shout out my cat. I'll tell the cat. I'll tell cargo. Name of the cat? Cargo. Cargo. Yeah, we get a mm. cargo. Cargo? Yeah, cargo. After the venue? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking sick. That is, it is, isn't it? That's what <laughs> yeah. I said. And then um, one of the Kardashians named their daughter Chicago and they call her cargo, so. I see. So Got yeah, you. it's ca catching on. I like it. I like it. Roxanne, you're a star. Thank you for having me. Everybody you're follow. Everybody follow. Thank you. There you go. Killer Killer Podcast without like it was out of fashion, all right? Hey. No. Sorry, we spoke about so much things.